If you're a fan of anime and one day hope to write one, then you need to know the secret strategy of killing off a character. A character's death can ironically bring life and sustenance to any show and keep the audience on the edge of their seats as they wonder who could be next. While some shows might make this a major plot point, for Pokemon, it's just another Sunday afternoon in the boardroom. Due to that, we'll be counting just how many deaths there are in the Pokemon anime and which characters or Pokemon ended up taking the hit. We won't be leaving out a single piece of the puzzle this time in how many deaths there were in Pokemon, so every series, season, movie, and clip that is part of the main anime will be added here, and with all your help, we'll be collecting all deaths in Pokemon, now in HD. Even if the characters decide to get up right after. Oh hey, he did get up. The Ghost of Maiden's Peak is the first episode featuring a death as it tells the story of a young woman who desperately waited for her lover's return as he was sent off to war. She passed away over 2,000 years ago, but reveals herself at the end of the episode as a lingering ghost still waiting for her true love to return to her. Three episodes later, Ash and Pikachu decide they like what they see and become ghosts themselves as a chandelier drops from the ceiling, knocking them out long enough for the ghost of the manor to rip the souls out of their bodies. This leaves their bodies temporarily dead while they spirit away with the Ghost Trio. They're later revived as the ghosts return their souls back to their body before the 30-day money-back guarantee expired. Dr. Fuji and the scientist who created Mewtwo died by the hands of Mewtwo in Mewtwo Strikes Back, as Mewtwo angrily destroys the lab when finding out about how he was created. There was a total of 9 people as it was Dr. Fuji with 8 other scientists in the room, but there could have been like a janitor or a receptionist somewhere. Ash's most memorable death is shown later in this movie as he runs into the attack sent off by Mewtwo and Mew to stop the two. This leads Mewtwo to having a revelation and Mewtwo just slightly nod its head unfazed by Ash's sacrifice. These events were recreated in Play-Doh, but they don't add to the counter since they're the same events. This movie leads into the 10 minute short called The Uncut Story of Mewtwo's Origins, which is a story about Mewtwo's origins. It shows Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander all didn't survive the cloning process during the birth of Mewtwo as well as Amber, Dr. Fuji's deceased daughter, who he tried to clone after her passing. All four clones are seen fading away around the child Mewtwo and leaving him on his own. Dr. Fuji's marriage also dies as he gets obsessed with cloning Amber. But that's not a character, that's just a concept. The captain of a ship full of shiver dies as his ship sinks due to a fierce storm one night 300 years ago. This story and the captain are shown to Ash and his friends by the ghastly and haunter who were once his own and are still protecting the trophy he won in the past. Entei takes after Ash in the sacrificial pack during Pokemon 3 as he sacrifices himself to send the unknown back to their dimension and turns them into Scrabble tiles. Thanks to this, he protects Molly and returns her father with Amazon Prime. Celebi is weakened and dies in Pokemon Forever after breaking free from the dark ball containing it. The Pokemon of the forest cry for help upon seeing this and summon a horde of Celebi guardians to fly in and revive their fallen soldier in the sky. Latios bids farewell to Latios as it sacrifices itself to protect not only her, but the city itself and Pokemon heroes, just like its father in the past. At the end of the movie, the two Latios can be seen flying with Latios and are believed to be the spirits of Latios and his father. The virus Groudon and Jirachi Wishmaker is let loose onto the anime as it absorbs every Pokemon it can. It ingests an Absol, a Poochiena, a Lanoon, four Swablu, an Electroik, a Tropius, two Altaria, Jesse, James, and Meowth, a Breloom, two Nuzleaf, May and Brock, and Diane, leading Butler to break down his creation. He teams up with Ash to take down this monstrosity, but not before he gets a hold of Flygon, his Salamence, and him, as he sacrifices himself to protect Ash, Max, and Jirachi. This gives Jirachi enough time to desire enough doom to obliterate the Groudon and return everyone. All seven main human characters in Lucario and the Mystery of Mew get clickbaited by the Tree of Beginnings as it looks to be the end for them. Each one of them gets absorbed by red blobs and sent out their Pokemon from their Pokeballs to be safe before saying goodbye to them. Crying comes in clutch once more as Pikachu cries upon losing Ash, leading Mew to decide it's seen enough of that for one movie and revives them moments later. Lucario finds the core room of the tree and the giant crystal formation that holds Sir Aaron's body as he is shown to have sacrificed himself to save the kingdom, trading his life to stop a war. Needing to restore the tree, Lucario and Ash give their energy to Mew until Lucario pushes Ash away so Lucario himself can be the sole sacrifice for the tree. He sees Sir Aaron's sacrifice from the final past vision and meets him again in the afterlife.
A special episode of the Pokemon anime has Ash fight against a Mirage Mewtwo and Mew as Pikachu destroys the two Mirage Pokemon with a full power vault tackle. Dr. Young puts not only an end to this episode, but also to looking cool while walking away from an explosion, as he walks back inside his exploding castle, never to be seen again. Darkrai rises into a blast between Dialga and Palkia during the rise of Darkrai as it gives itself up to protect the town they are destroying. Darkrai is later fully healed after the two are stopped and gets to look over the town that is safe at last. Back to the regular series, as Pokemon Hunter J's ship takes a future sight from Mesprit and Uxie, crashing into the whirlpool and having to explode. Three of her crewmates that are shown on the ship go down with her as well, and it's likely her Salamence, Ariados, and Drapion were in their Pokeballs with her as well, but they weren't shown on screen so we won't count those. The first, but not the last death of a Pokemon team leader, happens only one episode after that, as Cyrus finally gets to be all alone, as he warps into the portal created it's for him mine. by Dialga and Palkia. Mine alone! In Arceus and the Jewel of Life, Arceus is shown to have attacked Deimos after he betrayed Arceus. It is shown that he and his assistant Marcus had died from the fall after this betrayal. Ash and everyone gets transported to the past by Delga later on in this movie, where they try to change what happened. Arceus is almost killed during this, which would result in them never having the ability to go to the past, meaning they would all die in this period of time, and as such they start to fade. Don't ask me how this works, that's just the plot, also I'm pretty sure this happened in Back to the Future. Pikachu dies to this and fades away completely, but is brought back right after, as Arceus is saved by Deimos. Marcus doesn't pass away from falling a second time, as he's later shown to end up working for Deimos in the credits of the movie. In Zorak Master of Illusions, Zora collapses from her injuries after being mortally wounded by the main villain Kadai. Zora cries in the hopes of waking her up, but is unable to as she passes, leading to another mythical Pokemon reviving someone. The two are tearfully reunited with one another and take down Kadai before returning to their homeland. During the Pokemon Black and White movies, the King starts to see Black as he dies after sealing away the Dragon Energy. Ash also dies later on in the movie, as no person can survive being frozen on the edge of space without a Psychic Fire-type's loving warmth. Pokemon X and Y's 14th episode is correctly implying we should seek some shelter from the storm as Esper's caretaker Lacey passes away. Pokemon creates their first solid plot as everything they could find in Diancie and the Cocoon of Destruction gets turned to stone. Riot's two Ninjask and Greninja are turned to stone by Eviltal. Eviltal then target swaps to Marilyn's Delphox and Yanmega. Soon after that, Millis steals Chestnut, tries to protect its group from Eviltal sniping up top, but only protects the humans and Aegislash, making it, Honej, and Dewblade turn to stone. Jesse, James, and Meowth come out of nowhere to get shot before moving to actual main characters with Riot and Marilyn next. Three of the carbon get turned to stone even though that's what they're already made of. And for some reason, Angus and Millis Steel decide to, oh my god, they're doing it. They're breaking out the steel ship to fight the bird of death head on. Who, and you won't believe this, turns them and their Aegis Slash to stone. Right before their ship falls into the water, Pikachu is the final one to get hit and turns to stone in Ash's arms. All of a sudden, Xerneas decides now's the time to show up to revive them all only after Pikachu and not the 50 other characters. Nearing the end of the XYZ series, Clembot sacrifices itself to release Zygarde from Team Flare's control. It was rebuilt later, but none of its memories remain. Marin's chest pee is absorbed into the giant rock as the glass shatters, but is retrieved in the next episode. That next episode is the end of Team Flare, as even though Lysander Kaiba walks off the cliff and Matrix dodges Greninja's tongue in the Clembot episode, he survives that, but is 100% defeated in this episode by Zygarde complete as he gets sucked into the explosion it created. Lysander's Gyarados and Pyroar likely went with him as well, just like Hunter J, but those were also not shown. Aaliyah, who is shown at the beginning of the Pokemon XY episode, is turned to stone by, you guessed it, Evil Tall again. This same fate was handed to the Talonflame that was owned by her love interest. In the Sun and Moon series, the first death you all know about happens and one journey ends, another begins, as the elderly Stoutland who was friends with Lytton passes away after a sad dream. The death isn't shown and is simply implied by it looking over Lytton in the clouds, but is later confirmed when they meet Stoutland's ghost. Meowth dies briefly after seeing Mimikyu's true form, but Meowth gets its soul back shortly after. Minior passes away as it loses its shell in showering the world with love. This is the opposite of being turned to stone as it loses its shell and slowly fades away from Poipal after saying goodbye. In Pokemon I Choose You, the Luxor ends up passing on as it tries to protect Sorrel from the cold. 
And the final death that takes place is from none other than Ash, as later on in this movie, he is taken out by Mars Shadow controlling Pokemon to attack him as he fades into the afterlife, letting Pikachu unleash enough electricity to power a small city. Ash is seen running back through the spirit world and being brought back by Ho-Oh, giving him the gift of its feather as he is reunited with his friends.